Here I was, about to execute this poor bastard like some dime store angel of death. And I realized they were correct. I wouldn't know right from wrong if one of them was helping the poor and the other was banging my sister. It looked loud and expensive enough to be Fabiana's. Her fashion sense didn't leave a whole lot of room for imagination, let alone food. These guys weren't messing around. This place was like Baghdad with G-strings. A couple of more seconds and I'd have given some poor street cleaner a crappy start to his day. This was a mess. Where the hell was Passos? We were two failed cops failing miserably at being bodyguards. He approached everything with about as little preparation as I did. Maybe that's why we got along. So this was it. My easy retirement money. My blood-stained 401k. A chance to drink for free while chaperoning socialites around town and making sure the poor people didn't get too close. The brochure sure didn't mention any of this shit. I had a hole in my second favorite drinking arm, and the only way we were likely to get Fabiana back now was in installments. Whoever our uninvited guests were, I was about done playing soldiers. I'd gotten into my share of bar fights, but that night made me wish for any one of those. It ain't often you get nostalgic for getting your ass kicked by six sailors on shore leave. I still didn't remember having met Passos before, but then again, I didn't have any friends left from those days and I didn't remember most nights after 6 p.m. Here I was, some hopped up gringo a long way from home, making trouble the only way I knew. As the weather worsened, I caught a glimpse of the rusted shells of previous lives that had been lived out here in this swampy shithole, and I wondered if I would end up the same way. Just past their sell-by, but I wasn't picky. The real security guards had been run off, paid off, or bumped off. That left us. It wasn't a fantastically comforting thought. I'm a self-righteous pain in the ass, but I'm not above embezzling office supplies. I didn't know what the hell I was going to find up there, but I sensed it wasn't going to be a stripper bursting out of a cake. No one would be rebooting his system. Poor bastard. So much for a lazy Sunday afternoon. My next trick would be a high wire act with a fiery pit for a safety net. It was nice that no one was shooting at me for a change, but I'd take shot in the head over a slow roast on a spit any day of the goddamn week. I felt dumb and exposed. I missed the booze. Not that it mattered, sober or drunk, I was hardly undercover. I stood out in this place like a streetwalker in a monastery. Well, they weren't gonna help me. And who could blame them? I was a dumb American in a place where dumb Americans were less popular than the clap. It was Monday afternoon, and I'd already been thrown out of a party gone to a strip club and got into a bar fight. This latest midlife crisis was certainly ticking all the boxes. I'd have felt worse taking someone's medication if everybody in that place hadn't been trying to kill me. If these drugs didn't have a doctor's name on them, I wasn't interested. One of my bullets is buried down there with her. I tell myself it was a tragic misunderstanding, an awful mistake. I tell myself a lot of things, all of it crap. This was the place, if not the time, to play my dirge. It didn't come out right, but I wasn't in much of a state to do anything, apart from kill people. The place was swarming with cops, but they weren't there for me, as far as I could tell. And I'd blundered my way into enough clusterfucks for one day. I was still alive, and still not all that happy about it. Why did the easy way out never come? Maybe I thought I didn't deserve it. Man, I was guessing these guys didn't spend their spare time studying the Geneva Convention. Jesus Christ, these bastards made the NYPD look like the Hare Krishnas. I couldn't make much sense of what I was seeing, but I had the feeling it wasn't that strange for anyone else. Anytime those guys decided to join the party, you could be sure it wasn't gonna end in a pinata and a slice of cake. When half the local police force and a crew of paramilitary psychopaths want to send you upstairs, 
I reasoned the crowd was as good a place as any, at least when we got shot. Maybe some kind soul would take a video and put it on the internet. And the band played on. I wasn't too excited about the acoustics in this place. A couple of gunshots would sound like I'd walked in here with a goddamn marching band. The Imperial Palace Hotel was a five-star bona fide shithole. There it was, the soundtrack to my life. And, for a few seconds, came harmony. Finally.